Tonight, White House correspondent Peter Ducey tells us the president has been doing his best to try to avoid some sticky subjects. And probably more dangerous and more difficult to manage. The White House is responding. He will make absolutely clear. This is Gun Cranks. <laughs> Hey there, everybody. It's Yes, it's another episode of The Gun Cranks. I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat, along with American handgunner editor Tom McHale and our former boss, Roy Huntington. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you back. We haven't talked in a long, long time, so I think we got a pretty fun show today. We've got several uh, topics that I really like. And continuing with our segment, Roy, how do you know if you're a gun crank? <laughs> I speak from experience here. You might be a gun crank if you can't remember your wife's birthday, but you know the velocity for a 221 Remington fireball. Ask me, I could tell wow. you. <laughs> that's, that's not even funny, it's true. So, I know, it's sadly. terrifying. <laughs> yeah. But we hope you, you are a gun crank just like us. So, hey guys, let's get started with the gun cranks. Hey guys, we got a fun segment. We were talking about this off the air and then realized it'd make a great segment for the gun cranks to discuss, and that's hiding guns. Now, we all hide them throughout the house for security reasons, and I would dare say that we've probably forgotten where we've hidden a few of them, especially Roy, but I thought, let's talk about that. You know, I've got magnets and I've got furniture and I got wall hangings and a lot of other crazy places. So, guys, where are some of the places you hide guns or maybe months later find them again? Holes in the backyard, mostly, but, uh, okay. you know, the accessibility is <laughs> a little rough. <laughs> now, now yeah. I was, you know what? You said the magic word with magnets. I love those things. I've got, uh, and I think you have yeah. some too, those soft hold SOF. Yeah, right here. HOLD.com uh, magnets. Those right and there. You can stick those things anywhere. I got uh, a couple inside my desk on the side, so they're, they're up by my legs. Can't see them. No, they're not security devices. You know, they're, they're holding devices. So if you got little ones or guests, yeah. uh, don't use that, so. Yeah, I forgot to mention that, you know, we've got little, little grandkids and we have a sheet made up and laminated that my wife and I cross check each other like a, 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 fly, a pilot checklist if they show up that we make sure we've got all of them. So this, we'll have fun talking about this, but always make sure that little people and unauthorized people cannot access your firearms. So I wanted to say that, keep the grandkids safe. Well, you know, that's a good point though, that there's, there's it's like camouflage and cover, or you know. Cover and concealment. In other words, cover and concealment, yeah. Is that it's, there's hiding a gun or there's securing your gun. Mm -hmm. And they're not always the same, you know. So, and I think a lot of people think that, oh, why well, hide this really high up in the co closet? But do you, we all remember when we were five years old and yeah. you know that you were unstoppable the climbing much. skills yeah. are you know, off the charts could, at five years old oh yeah. yeah i mean you know you it's yeah any number of chairs and boxes and you know everything else yeah. and you'll finally get it so what what i did growing up was i tended to of course you teach your kids and you hope that they behave for the chance when they accidentally find a gun but uh, I usually had mine locked away securely. But the reality of it is, is that if you need a gun for an emergency, you usually really don't have time to go to the gun safe and work the combination, get the gun out of the safe. You know, by then whatever's going on is you're either dead or the threat's gone or something else is happening. And so like you guys, I'm sure I tend to stash some guns in, you know, in, in critical places. And I think one of the really clever ones that anybody could do especially like if you're in an apartment or something, Skinner Sights makes something that's really clever. And I can't remember what he calls it exactly, but it's a, he makes it like it's a garment bag, mm -hmm. a zippered garment bag like you'd hang up and travel with, only it'll hold a long gun or two and it'll hold handguns and some accessories, a little bit of ammo, that kind of stuff. But boy, you know when it's put together and zipped up, it hangs in your closet and it looks just like a garment bag in your closet. So that's kind of one of those hiding in plain sight things, but it still lets you get access to it right away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I like to have something near the front doors. I think that's probably the number one place where you're going to need something. And I haven't got one of these, but I got a good friend that does. It's a picture frame. 
and it's a little deeper than normal and you open it and well looky there there's a pistol and a flashlight and a spare magazine right there by the front door and you probably on to even a fairly detailed inspection you wouldn't know it was there you know it's that's a good point about a flashlight yeah. that's you know make sure that people are listening yeah, yeah. have a flashlight with you well i've got one more the uh I just did a uh, cover story, uh, I believe January, uh, a new shorty shotgun that's coming out. And I was talking to, uh, I believe it was Michael Bain, I can't remember who, uh, on our podcast several months ago. And he was talking about he's got one of those stuck in an umbrella stand next to the front door. So, again, casual <laughs> observation, you wouldn't see it's there, but... You know, if a problem comes to your front door, you just go to the umbrella stand. If it's rain, you got it, things covered. And if it's something else, you definitely got it covered. But speaking of uh, hiding in plain sight, this, this is a, a thing I use that's actually, I think, intended for concealed carry, but it works really good around the house. Those, It's one of these mini portfolio, little zip up case about yay big kind of thing people uh, carry around offices. It also looks like a, yeah. like a Bible case, you know, with the, the little zipper around a book. Yep. Um, I actually use mine on a bookshelf. So, you know, in the, the master bathroom, there's a little shelving, you know, with some miscellaneous books and stuff yeah. in there. And uh, zip it up, close it, put it right in with the books, and it, it looks like a bookcase, you know. I've, you know, when I was a kid, I took a, a razor blade at a, a dime store 10 cent book, you know, <laughs> we got at a garage sale. And about 20 minutes later, it takes longer than you think. Uh, you just use the razor blade and cut out pages and cut out pages. And I, I was just a kid, I was about 10 years old, but I made my dad a little book like that to hold his little 38 that he had. And sure enough, you know, he used to keep it in his office right there. Uh, and so, so be innovative, you can do it yourself. Well, Roy, you're a, a master woodworker. Have you built some special furniture? Have you, I'm sure everybody's seen like on Instagram or Facebook or one of those, some guy that's got a coffee table and you open it up and there's enough firepower in there to subdue France or a major, you know, one major country. I, I actually have built a few and I tend toward, was it, oh, Oakham's razor, the the least, yeah. you know, number of steps to something is the better. And so I tried building one of the more complicated ones. And then I, I just thought, well, this is silly. Why have it all be all complicated? If it's exercising doing it just because it's fun to do, that's one thing. And what I have defaulted to eventually is there's a couple of, a couple of ways I like to do it is that if you build a end table that you might put next to your bed, uh, I like to build what looks like a kick plate around the bottom of it, but in actuality, the bottom front panel is a drawer. And uh, companies like Rockler and some of these other woodworking supply companies make these little buttons that you push, or you know, in other words, you, you push on the drawer and mm -hmm. then it kicks it open. Uh, and they're real simple to install, they're very easy to do. And so it's really easy, so you just go push it and then it opens up and you have a whole drawer there. And the other one that's really simple and people don't think to do this. You could do it to an existing table you have, which is if you have a, a like a dining room table and it's got a, 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 a ledge underneath the tabletop that goes mm -hmm. around the table, right? So all you need to do is right behind that, you can just put a couple of little metal brackets and put a box up there or put a little you know, drawer or a, a you know, cigar box or anything and you can keep a gun or your private stash in there and nobody in a thousand years is gonna yeah. look there. You until know, now, uh, right? <laughs> but it's but it's <laughs> until now they will, yeah. But but if you if you notice, so all these things they're fast to get to, and because that's what it you know how it is that thump in the night happens, or like you say, Brent, at the front door, and boy, you don't have time to do a lot of mm, dancing. Yeah. You know, you need to get to that gun. So has anyone here ever <laughs> hidden a gun and then forgot about it? Not that I'm willing oh. to admit publicly. Uh, yeah, I, I have no such <laughs> recollection. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I hid mine where they were supposed to be. You know, I was, I thought I had lost two guns. I thought I had stashed them in the house someplace. We live in a big old rambling place. You remember, yeah. right? You've been here and, uh, and we're in the country and we don't have little kids around. So, you know, we're a little casual about keeping guns handy. And man, I, I could not find these guns. I knew I had lost them. I thought they fell off the hood of my car or I did some stupid thing. I looked outside, I looked in the tractor, I looked in the barn, I looked everywhere. They were gone. And then they were gone about two years. 
And not too long ago, I was digging way back in the back of my safe, and they had fallen back behind something <laughs> in the back. And so, but the funny thing is the reaction, though, is because there, there's a moment where you go, <laughs> yay, right? And then you go, well, how yeah. stupid am I? They were right there in my safe. Well, <laughs> have you guys ever dug down into a pack and, oh, oh, I didn't know that was in there. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 can I tell a short yeah. story? There's a certain someone who we know in the industry who I will tell you who it is when we're done. Uh, I get a call from him one day and he goes, uh, I was a policeman at the time. He said, can you help me? And I said, what? And he said, yeah, my wife's at the airport and she has oh. a gun. And I said, I said, well, what happened? And what he had done was he had left his gun in his backpack mm -hmm. and she grabbed the backpack to oh. go on a trip and going through TSA right yep. you know or it was before tsa but it was just regular security but they were searching the backpack and they found a loaded gun there going through yep. which gives me the cold chills just thinking yep. about it so, i've got a good buddy so you're right exact same thing happened and he's on the list now he he carries a pistol but he had it in his portfolio tom and mm -hmm. just forgot it was in there because he carries it all the time and <laughs> he saw it was just going through the x-ray and he's like no <laughs> he said they were really cool and said it happens all the time but we're still going to arrest you yep so yeah <laughs> don't so don't get too sneaky in your hiding oh gosh uh, that's so again, circle back to safety. Make sure that especially the kids can't get to them. But realistically, if you're going to hide them around the house, make sure they're really well hidden and then make sure they're picked up when you have visitors. So let's talk some more about this offline because I want to know who this person is. <laughs> Hey guys, I want to I want to talk about something that uh, I'm sure you're going to devolve it into something fun, but uh, but there's a public service announcement in here somewhere, and I want to talk about dangerous targets. I mean, we all know the yeah, obvious yeah. stuff like yeah. gas tanks and uh, you know nuclear materials, and you know I try and minimize shooting at that kind of stuff, but but there's a lot of everyday things that uh, really are dangerous if you if you know a little bit. Um, and I'd like to talk about that today. Brent, what do you got? Oh, well, propane tanks, of course. <laughs> Those are incredible. <laughs> but, <laughs> see, I thought we were going to talk about how to make dangerous targets oh. rather than well, be all safe. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. Of course, you know, in my area, <laughs> hey, y'all watch this is a pretty common last words of yeah. many people. Here, <laughs> yeah, hold my beer. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but the interesting thing if you've ever shot a propane tank, and I'm not saying I have, I'm not saying I haven't, I'm not saying I have, <laughs> think about this. You shoot a propane tank, it doesn't blow up. It's not like the movies. You have to have that proper ratio of fuel to air, and you have to have an ignition source. I'm sorry these aren't suggestions. They're called laws of physics. So if you put a candle next to a propane tank and then shoot it, yeah, it'll probably blow up. So you heard Just that saying. from somewhere? You heard. I've heard that. You heard I read somewhere. It. Read it yeah. on the internet. YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Got it. <laughs> or, or cans of paint. Same thing. Or cans of starter fluid. I'm just saying. Yeah. WD-40. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Well, you know, I was with a group of nefarious <laughs> ne'er-do-wells, and we were in the California desert. I think it's been long enough now that no one can arrest me. And... Uh, they thought it was a good idea to shoot a propane tank or two or three or four. And so the ignition thing though, I thought it was really clever. Now we, he put the target like 200 yards down range. It was a standard one pound propane bottle and he lit a street flare next to it. Cause he said, he try candles except yeah. they blow out and you know, and sometimes the explosion itself actually just blows the candle out. And so we, so we get 200 yards away, we get behind a berm, we're all geared up and everything ready to go, fires off the street flare. And so we were waiting for the, what was it, what did we used to call it? A blevy. Yeah. Remember? If a, like a gas truck explodes, it goes, vroom, when all yeah. the fumes go. So we thought that's what was probably going to happen, right? And... Uh, 
So, so he shoots it, and the first time, that's exactly what happened. It was great fun. Boom, whoosh, you big thing. Yay, everybody high fives, and we liked it a lot and everything else. And so then, so we did it again. <clears throat> and this time when he shot, for some reason, it didn't blevy and blow up. But what it did do was it launched itself as us just like an Atlas <laughs> rocket, <laughs> you know? And, 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 and it wasn't just going, <laughs> it was going, <laughs> like that. It was like, wow. uh, you know, like that, right? Big corkscrew. And, and of course, we're a bunch turned immediately into sissy <laughs> girls, you know? And we, we yeah. run away, keep running, well, you know? So, but it, it made it back and it went over our heads 200 wow. yards away. <laughs> and that's when we went, no, that's when we all kind of went, yeah. okay, well, gosh, okay, well, we don't, goodbye. Okay, we're done now. <laughs> you know, we've seen that. You know, we don't have they, to do they that. They call again. that a hunter yeah. killer. And, and here's an important point I learned in bomb school you cannot outrun anything coming at you because by the time you see it <laughs> and you process it, <laughs> then that's if it's going to get you it's you already got so <laughs> you, you see guys true. peering yeah. around the corner and, 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 oh if it blows up i'll duck back here it doesn't work that way too late you end up with a part of a sheared off propane exactly. bottle between your eyes and if you'd care to see go to youtube and there are various uh, videos of propane bottles whizzing yep. through the air being uh, dodged by so, we red but guys wanna... we've got to touch on the most dangerous hmm, but widely used oh. target of all is the the trade name for one particular product is tannerite there's mm. several on the market. Oh, and yeah. Tom, I'm guessing you've had some adventures with Tannerite. Uh, not bad ones. I've, um, oh, really? you know, it's fun stuff. I've, I've shot it before. Yeah, it's great and stuff. Keep it downrange. And, uh, you know, the, the real tip is don't pack it in something metal. There's a horrible video out there of a guy who stuffed an old riding lawnmower full of Tannerite, yep. stood behind a tree and shot it. And kind of like your propane tank story, a giant hunk of that riding mower launched directly back at him and amputated. I don't know if it was arm or his leg, but you know, yeah. basically took it off. And uh, like, we're talking about a mm. lot of power there when you contain that kind of pressure. You know, use it, use it like yeah. it's supposed to. But mm. it's it's a, a yeah. real deal yeah. explosive. Just because yeah. it's stable enough, mm -hmm. unmixed, you can put it on a store shelf. But once that stuff is mixed and you set it off. It, it's the real deal, and you see these folks, and you can go on YouTube, I have, and you'll find people that have put hundreds of pounds of that in something. And most of the time it's okay, some of the time it grows tragically wrong, and I, I'm not joking about that. I hear that the uh, the feds come knocking yeah. on their door too uh, when they do that. You're not supposed. It when says right in the, the hospital. You know, do not <laughs> yeah. use this to to blow stuff up. Yeah. Let's talk about an obvious one though, yes. which is steel yeah. targets. And I think I think a lot of people it's it's what do you call that familiarity breeds yeah. contempt kind of uh, I hardly a day goes by where I don't shoot mm -hmm. a steel target here you know v videos and articles and stuff and you guys are very similar to that and but I'll tell you right now I always wear ear protection and eye protection you know and I always pay attention to how it's going to ricochet and where it's going to go you know the steel targets are always angled so when they hit the bullets go down to the ground and uh, you know but even with all of this care that I do my back patio where I do a lot of my shooting from kind of uh, I will look down periodically and you'll see a, a big you know, piece of jacket mm -hmm. material, jagged, charred, gnarly, nasty yep. piece of copper laying right where I was standing, you know, and I'm extremely careful. And so I think we just all have to throw a reminder out to everybody. It's have fun, shoot your dueling trees and all that, but man, don't for a second, you know, not we were, wear We were at a protection. shooting event, my whole family and, uh, and I, and um, we, it was a proper steel, AR-500 steel, the whole work. So we were probably 30 yards behind the shooting line. And it's not that that stuff can come back and land at your feet. It can come back at high velocity. My uh, son got a hunk of that embedded in his arm. It was so deep in there and to get it out with needle nose. And that thing bled for like two hours. I mean, it was a mm. deep, deep puncture wound. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, I, I think this is actually a good time to talk about the use of proper steel uh, just because it's metal doesn't mean you should shoot at it. 
you know, steel targets are, are exactingly made for specific hardness and they're rated for handguns. There's other stuff rated for rifles, thickness and all that. If you just take a hunk of steel out there and it starts getting, you know, pitting and dense in it, watch out, retire that thing. Do not shoot that anymore. Cause that, those yep. little tiny pits and dents, that's what'll launch stuff straight back at you. I mean, I've had high powered rifle ra- yes. rounds, not the, not the jacket fragment, but entire rounds come back whizzing over the shooting line, you know, from somebody shooting at, at some kind of improper steel, so to speak. Yeah. Serious stuff. And, and, you know, make sure your ammo, you don't want to be using steel core or penetrators. Uh, I know a, a popular shooting school has a big problem with that of, uh, you know, on their reactive steel and suddenly <laughs> cease fire and there's a nice hole drilled in one. Okay. Everybody produce your magazines and show us what you've got. But uh, on a related note, though, uh, you know, it's very common across the country. You did a lot in the desert, Roy, is just plinking. And you might go out and plink at a, you know, an old car body or whatever. Just remember that bullets ricochet nicely off of rocks and they don't generally ricochet in a predictable manner. So that kind of stuff is fun to shoot, but like Tom said, make sure that you're really safe, that you're protected, and in the case of kind of an improvised range, think about not just the round going down range, but what if it goes this way or that way? Then if you're close to habitation or or other people, you might have a problem. So just kind of suss that out before you start putting lead down range. Yep. Have, you know, I had the I had an opportunity to fire a lot of tracers on a few occasions, and we were at a place. It was a military facility, and they were we were they were showing us how, and we were allowed to shoot guns. And there was a like a, a rocky hillside that was maybe 300, 400 yards away, and it was just past dusk. And so we were shooting uh, tracers just generically at this hillside. Well, what was amazing to me was the fact that it looked like an explosion of sparklers after the bullets hit. I mean, there was no, you could not predict where these bullets were gonna ricochet to. And they were just going off in every possible direction. Because if it was the daytime, you shoot into the hill, you think the bullets are going into the hill, right? Oh no, they were going just, you know, and like you say, Brent, some were going back It's like fireworks, everybody, you see one skip like that, and everybody's like, ooh. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, they do. They skip Till up like that. You know? straight back, hey, before right? we wrap it yeah. up, though, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was amazed when they would, you, you'd see them whizzing back at you. But let's talk just briefly ah. about water, because well, I have a pond here, and I shoot in my pond every once in a while, just mostly for fun or at turtles or, you know, or dragonflies or something like that. But you have to be careful, though, because uh, like Will Dabbs, we've had readers be concerned because it's, some pictures we run shows Will shooting into his pond. Well, Will specifically built his pond so he could shoot. And he's got this couple hundred foot cliff backstop, or backstop at the far side of his pond. And so when he shoots, it's always against that. And so unless you have a place that you know absolutely positively is safe, you know, then you have to keep your wits about you. you know? And my pond is the same way. I have a big hill backstop behind it. So if I'm shooting into it, you know, that that's, yeah. it's safe. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna do anything stupid. And also, you know, watch your angle because bullets really do they bounce do. off the water. They do. So, yeah. Well, so to cool. our, oh, good go stuff. ahead, Tom. Oh, I was just gonna say good stuff, guys. I mean, uh, you know, just be careful, be careful out there. And yeah. I'd like to leave with, with just a couple thoughts. If you're gonna shoot steel, buy it. Don't don't say, hey, I got this nice hunk of metal down in the garage or out in the workshop or from the junkyard. Yeah. Buy it. It is made to specific <laughs> tolerances for this purpose. And if you see a steel target start to get dented, pitted, pockmarked, or a hole in it, retire it. Do not shoot it anymore. So that's my exactly. soapbox. Good advice. Well, Good advice. you know, we've, we've talked about Good some advice. fun stuff. We've talked about some dangerous stuff. Hey, we've already done it, or we know somebody that did it, so you don't have to, and you don't end up as one of those horrible videos on the internet talking about the time I nearly bled to death from a sliced jugular vein. So we need all the viewers we can get. So leave that stuff to other people and just be safe when you're out there shooting. You know, Brent, you always say, what is it? Gun. Gun is G is one gun letter and away fun from are one letter apart. So let's put the put the F in gun. Exactly. 
<laughs> Let's put the fun in gun. And I want to talk about fun guns. And uh, I'll lead the pack here with something. But first, I want to <laughs> make it a point, and I know you guys will all agree, and so will the viewers, is that it's amazing <laughs> that we're so fickle. Because one week, my funnest gun I have on my desk it might, might be a Thompson Center contender, you know, something like that, right? Next week, it's going to be a $50 BB gun. And it just, it's so funny. We're so sort of driven by squirrel, <laughs> you know, that we do it. And right now, my, my squirrel is the Umarex Gauntlet uh, Precharged Pneumatic Air Rifle. And I have a 22. Uh, which I think is a substantial upgrade from the 17s. And I hear say, and Tom, you might know uh, that they're going to be coming out with a 25, which is really interesting to me. But, but I have to say, this thing, for just a few hundred dollars, it's amazingly accurate. You know, we're talking one inch at 50 yards. Uh, it's dead death mm -hmm. to a ground squirrel. Knocks them absolutely right out of these trees. Uh, better than a 17 does. And I love the fact that it's a pre-charged pneumatic, so you're not, you know, pumping up the, you know, the gun or, or stuff like that. I'm fortunate enough that I have one of the electric pumps, and so you recharge the gun from the electric pump, and so it's just easy peasy. And I have to say, it's just fun. It's just fun. Uh, you can shoot it without ear, ear, uh, ear protection, and like I said, it's accurate. It's fun for plinking. And I like also the fact that it's uh, very shooter friendly. So if I've got a new shooter here, it's a great way to, to sort of introduce them to the whole take a gun, here's how you run the bolt. You put a little shot, you know, a, a cartridge in it and close it. And here's how you sight and pull the trigger. And then the target goes ting or the balloon breaks or the Neko wafer shatters. And everybody has a good time. And then it's a natural transition to a 22. So right now, uh, Umarex 22 Gauntlet is my favorite cool. gun. Next, Tom. <laughs> Tough one. Tough one. There's there's two vying for position, uh, you know, at this particular time, and they're they're regular contenders in the top of this. Uh, I got to put out a, a Ruger single six out there. For those of you not familiar, uh, 22 revolver. Uh, this one's a convertible, so it has a 22 Magnum cylinder. But what makes it fun? Well, I mean, what's more fun than shooting a 22, right? What's more fun than a revolver? And then, but what makes it really fun is that underpowered 22 ammo, those Agula um, Calibri cartridges. You know, they're they're mm -hmm. short, they're primer only. Them. They have yeah. a 20 grain little pointy lead bullet on it, and since it's a revolver, you don't have to worry about them cycling the action. So. Uh, you can shoot those things most anywhere, and it's probably about the same power level as that 22 gauntlet you're talking about. So, you know, I don't want to run afoul of mm -hmm. any uh, neighborhood association's bylaws, but but you can shoot those things in a lot of places. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll say I'll. Sa oh, it's a par. It's a parlor. It's a yeah. yeah it's a parlor. It, it sure is, and it's. It you know? is uh, yeah. more fun. Now, you do have to pay attention to cleaning because uh, shooting those things out of a revolver will, will produce a little letting over time. So, yeah. so get that gunk out once in a while. But, uh, uh, but that's, a, that's a super fun one. Well, Tom, that's you're not going to be surprised. I've got three guns because I'm indecisive <laughs> and I have a short attention span. First of all, my Mossberg Shockwave. That thing is just so much fun. Putting all that lead down range is just a hoot. And then, of course, the single action army in 45 Colt. I mean, this Aruger Vaquero, mm -hmm. um, what's not to love about that gun? You can channel your inner John Wayne, but probably my funnest gun at the top of the heap is the Taurus TX-22. Uh, we both reviewed these. These are just absolute fun. They, they are like a full-size Striker 9mm, but they shoot a, a 22 long rifle. They're lightweight, they have nice manageable recoil, they feel good in your hand. They're just fun to shoot. Anybody that shoots this comes off the line with a smile. So uh, it's hard for me to decide. But Shockingly accurate. It is, it is. Neko wafers it are is. dead meat at, at 20 yards. So I, I did a story on the <laughs> optics version of that and it, it uh, no lie, was shooting five shot, one inch groups 
all day long with various types of of rimfire ammo. Yeah, I was and, I was stunned. And they're inexpensive, and it's kind of an inside joke here. We're always asking each other the price, and we always go, "I didn't research that. I don't remember what the <laughs> MSRP is on these, but it's under two hundred, I'm sure." So, they're they're a great gun. I'm a big fan. And my, I think I've told the story before. My wife actually wants to carry this. And I said, well, honey, it's, it's a 22, which, you know, we've said before, if that's all you can carry, okay. But I really want something more, more bang, bang instead of pew, pew. But for training uh, or introducing folks to shooting a handgun, this is a great, mm -hmm. great pistol. <laughs> I say let her carry it. Because if she lights some miscreant up with that thing, <laughs> it's like you see her now, right? How do you but turn you know, this thing I think off? If somebody right? pulled that yeah. out of her purse, I think that would get folks' attention right now. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> exactly. Plus, you could always beat him to death with it. Hey, uh, Tom, did you notice something, though? Is that I had a very calm and relaxing and sane, quiet air rifle as my favorite gun. You had yeah. a 22 pistol with arguably the calmest, most sane, most quietest ammo yeah. that you can put in one, right? And our aberration <laughs> had a shockwave, a 45 yeah. Colt, and then I think we shamed him into coming up with a 22 at the last minute. He was probably <laughs> scrambling in his drawer looking for, That's I better have Mr. a 22, I better have a 22. To you. So yeah, just, yeah. A uh, Mr. Aberration, so just we know. I think if I had to go now to my second funnest gun, is um, this was on my desk for a reason, and it's the, uh, the Thompson Center Contender Encore series of guns. And so I've got two early Contender frames, and then probably uh, more barrels that I care to say uh, out of this mouth because people will laugh at me, but... <laughs> Suffice to say, I know the 221 Fireball yeah. Ballistics because that's one of them. And uh, I just think they're so much fun. They're, they're simple. They're single shot. So you don't have to go to the range and shoot 150 rounds today. You could shoot 15 or 20 or 30 rounds. And I really like it because it's fun when you're developing loads. Uh, if you're going to go deer hunting today, you take the 30-30 barrel. Later in the afternoon, you're going to shoot squirrels with the 22 barrel. And then the next day, you're going to go sh shoot coyotes, and you take the 223 or the 221 barrel. And I'll tell you what, it's just a lot of fun, and it's a little slower pace what? of life. And if you haven't tried the What's TC What's the point guns, of slowing down? Cool. What? <laughs> I know. Why are we not caffeine, surprised More caffeine. That, need you know? more caffeine. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Tom, what's so your second I didn't mention the second one that was vying for first place, and that would be a Smith & Wesson M&P 22 Compact. Mm. But you got to stick the suppressor on mm -hmm. it. So for those who aren't familiar, oh, it's about yeah. a three-quarter size version of a standard M&P pistol. You know, I think it's about exactly three-quarter scale. So it's nice and compact and small. I can fit all my fingers on it. But when you add a 22 suppressor, which is about yay big, uh, it is perfectly proportioned like any other normal traditional handgun without a suppressor. It's a little longer, but the overall weight and feel is just mm. right. And boy, it is quiet. And I've been known to shoot those Calibris out of that too. Now you gotta cycle the slide, but that's okay, you know. <laughs> it, it creates negative noise, actually. It, when you fire it, it <laughs> removes <laughs> ambient noise from the atmosphere. It's that quiet. <laughs> Uh -huh. It's like a yeah. black hole. What's well, it? For physics. Noise. It's the same uh, yeah, principle. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I have, I have it on good authority because science. That's hysterical. So. I guess my second favorite would have to be the the mini gun, but I it's not here. So I actually got some video today. A friend firing one. You know. And I am so jealous. <laughs> I do love the sound. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah, always reminds me of an A10 warthog yeah. coming in. Brap, you know that. Freedom. One. Yeah, I love that. So, all right. Well, hey, if what do you say we challenge viewers? Uh, send us a note. Tell us what your favorite gun is. Uh, you get extra brownie points if you send us in a picture of there you, you posing with your favorite gun. And if you include your dog in the picture, you get extra, <laughs> you extra go. bonus points. So, right? <laughs>
Well, guys, it was a great, fun show. I really enjoyed talking about the dangerous targets. Not that I've done any of that stuff, nor has Roy. Tom, you didn't admit to anything. Nope. Yet. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, another great episode of the Gun Cranks. Of course, should I say that? That sounds pretentious. I don't mean to say that. We had fun with this episode. I hope you had fun watching it. And make sure you leave us a comment down below. Tell us what your favorite gun is. Maybe tell a time you heard you heard of a friend that shot a target and something didn't go right and tell it as a cautionary tale. But let us know what, what you're thinking down there. You can also reach us by writing to editor at gunsmagazine.com or editor at American Handgunner and you'll get to Tom and I and we can always pass things along to Roy. While you're online, check out our websites and please make sure you check out AmericanCop.com. So that, that keeps our bosses off our tail and we can keep doing this crazy little thing we like to call gun cranks. Until the next episode, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat, along with Tom McHale and Roy Huntington. Get out there and get shooting. <laughs>